The idea behind basic neural networks is to give a computer tons of input and output examples, then hope that the computer can find a way to meaningfully relate the two and generalize for more examples. The way it learns a meaningful relationship is through a series of connections between neurons. Each of these connections has a weight which represents the significance of the connection, and each neuron has a bias, which is a number added to the neuron to give it a higher or lower activation. Finding the right weights and biases to get as close as possible to a desired set of outputs for a specific set of inputs is called training, and it uses tons of cool big brain stuff like backpropagation. I'm not big brain, so I just use a JavaScript library called brain.js to do all the training for my networks. If we were to represent our network such that each neuron could be thought of as a coordinate with an X component as its layer in the network, and a Y component as its position in said layer, we could say the activation states for each of the neurons in the network could be represented as this. Of course, seeing a giant block of math like this isn't very useful unless you get an intuitive grasp on what it means, so here goes. A neuron at position xy would hold the value of the sum of all neurons in the previous layer with each neuron having its activation multiplied by the strength of the connection, or weight at position xy for neuron i. After we take the sum of all neurons multiplied by their weights, we add the bias b at xy for the specific neuron we're finding, then wrap the value in an activation function, which in this case is a sigmoid. So now that we have an idea of how a neural network would work mathematically, we still need to actually make it happen. For a really simple example, let's start by training a neural network on an XOR logic gate, then trying to put that into Desmos. Let me just take that... Okay, so we have a trained network now that can fairly accurately mimic an XOR gate. To translate this to Desmos, we can have a list that stores our input and a list for every neuron to define their biases at that certain point. We can then represent each neuron as a variable based on the expression we previously discussed until we reach the output layer. A lot of copy-pasting later, and I ended up with this. The especially cool thing about having a network with a low number of input and output layers is that the entire network can be represented as a function with two inputs and one output, and hence can be graphed three-dimensionally. Anyways, XOR gates are trivially simple, so let's make a network that actually does something impressive, like recognizing handwritten digits. The MNIST dataset is a collection of pre-classified grayscale images of handwritten digits normalized to a 28 by 28 pixel boundary. What I want to do is convert these images to an array of 784 inputs with 10 outputs for how sure the network is that the image is any given digit 0 to 9. You could do this the much more efficient way of packing every image in the dataset into a single image that could be easily loaded and interpreted, but I didn't feel like doing that, so instead we're gonna pipe DIRSB into a file, then turn it into a JS file storing a multi-line string and use that to load our 42,000 training images individually. A bit of training later, and now we have a network that doesn't completely suck at classifying numbers. Unlike with the smaller XOR network, this network is a little too big for me to just copy-paste values, so instead I wrote a function to convert a set of weights and biases to a list of Desmos expressions. Our network doesn't really look that cool right now, but we can fix that by making a nice little display for our input and a graph for confidence of each number. Another problem is changing our input would require manually modifying values one by one in a 784 length array, so I wrote a program real quick to simplify the process. This lets you draw onto a grid and use the values we created as an input to the network. So, does it work? Well, yes and no. It's able to classify a lot of numbers correctly, but sometimes gets hung up on specific details. This could be caused by overfitting, or maybe just a bad architecture. Image classification would probably work much better on a convolutional network instead of a classic model. But, for a proof of concept, it's fairly accurate. Also, if you're wanting to mess around with it, links to the source code, graph, and a live version of the editor are in the description. Okay, finally, thank you all for 100 subscribers. I think we're at like 130 by the time I'm writing this script. 140 by the time I'm recording. And that may not seem like much, but it means a lot, especially since I've been doing this for quite a while now. I know it's cliche, but if you like my content, it would mean a lot to me if you would consider subscribing.